Hello friends, hope you're all doing well. Welcome to today's video. We're gonna try something a little bit different in today's video because obviously we've been putting out some videos recently that have been pretty highly edited. Like I'm shouting at you about things and I just wanted to kind of strip it back, uh, do something a bit more conversational today because I wanna talk about terrestrializing a little bit more in depth than we've been talking about in regards to team building in particular, because I feel like it's a really important aspect of terrestrializing and how much it will have an impact in competitive play when these new games do drop. So we'll hop over and we'll take a look at some different screens. Obviously we know about terrestrializing. We know that you're gonna be able to have any terror type on your Pokemon. They might not be available at the start of the games, but pretty much essentially in the end, we're gonna be able to have any single Pokemon with any single Terra type. And that's pretty, pretty unique, pretty amazing. It's a pretty interesting mechanic. Obviously there's a bunch of stuff about the mechanic itself that we don't know yet. Um, presuming that we can only terrestrialize one Pokemon per battle. Uh, but once we do that, it, it seems like it's gonna act a bit like a mega evolution where it's gonna stay on that Pokemon even if you switch it out until that Pokemon faints or the battle ends. So it's a pretty cool mechanic and it's got a, a bunch of different layers to it. There's a lot of conversations about should we be using it one way or using it another way and I don't think it's probably the best way to kind of look at it like that. But specifically, like I said, in today's video, I wanna talk about it in particular with team building and how it'll affect team building going forward in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet in particular, because if we just take, for example, if I'm just I'm gonna pull up a team here, uh, I don't know any particular team, but we'll use my world's 2014 team because I know the specific weaknesses around that. It's in in my brain. So we have Mawile, we have Tyranitar, Garchomp, we have Zapdos, Politoed, and Ludicolo. Now, this team obviously got top eight at Worlds that year. So performed pretty well. Um, and it did the job that it needed to. But a good friend of mine, Ben Kiriaki, might know him, one of the, probably the best UK players that we've ever had in uh, Pokemon competitively video game wise, did point out to me after the tournament, how much of a weakness my team did have to Ferrothorn. And it was an, a massive oversight for myself because at the time Ferrothorn really wasn't something that was played a lot in the 14 format. You saw it occasionally, but it was something that I didn't really think about. And again, even if I did think about it going into the tournament, it was probably one of those Pokemon where I thought, okay, well, at this stage in my team building, it does everything that I needed to do against the things that I expect to see a lot. I'm just gonna have to take the, the L, the big loss on those matchups if I face them and hopefully I don't face too many of them in the event. And that's a kind of common trend that you see when a lot of players are team building in a lot of different formats, a lot of different generations where you can't cover everything because it's impossible with six Pokemon, you've got four move slots per Pokemon, you need to incorporate strategies in that, you need to incorporate speed control and a bunch of other tools that just don't allow you to cover everything. There is no single one perfect Pokemon team. Uh, some people might argue that, but I would definitely disagree. You're always gonna have like weaknesses in your team building, but I do believe with terrestrializing, that kind of compensates a lot of those holes that you're gonna have in your team and kind of patches those up. Not to the extent where you're gonna be able to be like, okay, my team is perfect. I'm gonna beat everything. No single team can beat this team. But I do think it makes it a lot harder to have those holes in your team if you're building your team correctly. Like for example, I could just go, oh, well, let's see. What would make a good Terra fire type on my team. Hmm, maybe Mega Mowile. Mega Mowile would make a great Terra type. And obviously for context of this video, I know that we can't get Megas in Scarlet and Violet as of yet. We probably never will. But just for the context of this video for this team that we're talking about, Mega Mowile would have made a great fire Terra type. And that would have covered for that Ferrothorn weakness perfectly because then I don't have to use it all the time. I can capitalize on what Mowile's meant to be in the team for. But at the same time, if Ferrothorn pops onto the field, I can think, well, I could just turn it into a fire type. And if I really thought that was an, a big enough issue, I could say, well, let's turn Zapdos into a fire type or Politoed into a fire type, uh, just to kind of cover that and give you that extra damage. Obviously not all of these examples are gonna make sense in particular to this team, but I'm just using these as references to what you can do to make up the coverage issues that you're gonna have. We'll go back to the Ferrothorn where the Ferrothorn in most 
generations, most formats that you've played it in, it has an easy win condition. You get rid of the fire types and then Ferrothorn pretty much wins the game because your opponent doesn't have a way to deal with it. But if you do that going into Scarlet and Violet, you think, okay, well, I can get rid of the fire type now Ferrothorn's going to have a way easier time to perform in the rest of this game. It's going to be able to close it up. Nothing's really going to be able to hit it for enough damage to remove it from the field. But then once you remove the fire type, you've got to keep in mind then there's three other Pokemon in your opponent's team that could all have that fire type terrestrialization. So you have to keep that in mind. And it does work on the flip side, of course, as well, where Ferrothorn could itself terrestrialize into a water type you know to kind of combat that weakness but then that goes a bit more into depth about how you're using uh, terrestrialization in battles rather than the team building aspect of it which we're talking about in this video so technically you can have six additional coverage types in your team that is huge you know we've never been able to have anything like that before in competitive play so you could make up everything that you're missing from your team the big holes that you're missing the big weaknesses in your team and construct a terror type per each pokemon to really complement the rest of the team because you're not going to go into every battle and you're going to be like well i'm going to terror this pokemon this battle this pokemon this battle it gives you the the option to have that flexibility to say right well if i come up against this threat then what's my option here do i have options within my kind of standard six already and if i don't what can i utilize in a terror type fashion to maximize the team's kind of potential its coverage and everything like that and you can utilize that through coverage moves that you can normally see on pokemon or through moves like terror blast which we're going to have access to which plays off you know it will be a physical type if you're physical type attack is stronger or your special attack if your special attack is stronger so you're not even going to be tied to not having a, a stab attack with those terror transformations now a lot of people are saying that probably the best way to use terror types is going to be going into that same type um that you are in your base form so for something like garchomp you're going to want to go into a ground a pure ground type because you get that double stab boost and that is a very good point but there are going to be situations I think with terrestrializing where yeah you can get that extra power if you want and that's probably primarily how we will see terrestrializing played because players are going to capitalize on throwing something like a life orb or a choice band onto a guard chomp or something similar to a guard chomp and then going for that pure type to get the double stab boost to ensure that they're getting absolutely ridiculous amount of damage off every single turn that they're on the field so that is definitely one way of looking at it but the way that i would like to look at it as well is and it's not something to discount because I do feel like it would really benefit a team's synergy overall and it's just an aspect that I've been looking at is looking at other typings because you're still going to get a stab boost on these attacks so if you're you're holding something like a choice band if you're holding something like a choice scarf you're still going to get that same type of attack bonus on the attacks if you're using something like Terra Blast, even if you turn into a different type than your kind of base typings are, because it gives you a different advantage, doesn't it? It gives you a different coverage. It gives you different resists that you don't have before. Whereas if you're just going down that straight route, although you are putting out a lot of damage, you're not making it more difficult for your opponent to kind of keep guessing about what Terra Pokemon you're potential field Pokemon are going to be, if that makes sense. So I do think there are a lot of different ways you can look at terrestrializing in Pokemon in particular, and it does make sense to go for the biggest amount of power to be able to knock out your opponent's Pokemon before they can knock yours out. But there are also ways in which you can use terrestrializing as well to complement your overall team synergy. And I think that's something really that we'll, we'll be able to look a lot more in depth at when these games come out, when we actually have the practicality of being able to dive into battles and see how teams actually function because at the minute obviously everything is up in the air it's just conjecture no one really knows for sure what the best way is going to be to use these pokemon we don't know for instance the 100 what the stab boost is going to be there's just kind of theories on that from information that we gathered from tidbits from different trailers and things like that and kind of trying to work out from damage taken which is 
I guess, a way of doing it, but not an accurate way. And we don't know what Terra Blast base power is going to be yet, or if there are drawbacks with that move, or if there's any other secondary things that we have to think about when we're terrestrializing in a battle. We don't know all the information. So at the minute, it is all just conversations, and I really enjoy it. But, you know, the thing is, I think don't look at it in just one angle. I think, you know, there are going to be so many multi different layers of being able to use terrestrialization in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet that are going to make it in probably in my opinion one of the best gimmicks so if we're calling it a gimmick one of the new mechanics that we have access to that we've had access to in a lot uh, for a long time with a lot of generations and it is open to every single Pokemon even if you are just limited to one Pokemon terrestrializing per battle, as we assume you are, it's just gonna come down to a bit more of an art with when you terrestrialize in the match itself and which Pokemon you use to terrestrialize to kind of try and overwhelm your opponent or disrupt their strategy. But there are a bunch of different ways to do it, a bunch of different theories on it. Uh, these are just my opinions and I thought I'd throw them down today to just get the conversation started because I really like to hear your opinions, your thoughts on terrestrializing, how you feel that it's going to work in the new games and uh, what impact and how you see yourselves using it when these games do drop. But um, hope you've enjoyed today's video, friends. Like I say, a little bit different. Just wanted to talk about it a bit more conversationally and give an angle from my thoughts about how terrestrializing could be utilized. I'm not saying it is the exact right way to use it, but I think there are different ways to kind of conceptualize it and use it in battle and it would be interesting to just put them down hear your thoughts and uh, go from there so any more information that we get out on terrestrializing in pokemon scarlet and violet of course i'm going to do an update so hopefully you catch that video when it does drop and we've got more information on it but if you don't want to miss it hit that sub button and make sure the notification bell is turned on so you don't miss anything when it comes out but have a great rest of your day friends take care of yourselves and i will see you in another video very soon so until then take care bye bye